Hi, everybody. Welcome to Keelan Babies, presented by Spendthrift. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Nicole Russo, and let's throw up the field for Sunday's Keeneland Baby Race. We kick off the dollar pick six at Keeneland with race number four, going four and a half furlongs on the main track, a maiden special weight for two-year-olds. And Nicole, we've got Wesley Ward, we've got John Ennis, we've got the two big-name trainers with first-time starters at this meet. We also have a couple of experienced horses, so a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. And of course, the thing my eye went right to is we get a chance to see a couple of runners by some of this year's freshman sires. Practical Joke and Midnight Storm, both grade one winners themselves. Practical Joke by Spendthrift's two-time reigning leading sire and emerging sire of sires into mischief. Let's take a look at the field in program order, uh, number order, beginning with the horse breaking from the rail. That's the number one. Ask the umpire. Commissioner has done well with two-year-old debut runners. He's clicking at 18%, and the damn one's sprinting on dirt at two. So there is some speed in this pedigree. It's a John Ennis trained first-time starter. Louis Saez takes them out. Yeah, and this one has some fast works out of the gate. Going to need that gate ability, especially breaking from the rail here. Commissioner has really surprised me with his uh, first-time starter statistics. Being a son of AP Andy, being so long-winded himself, I really expected them to need more time and need more distance. But he does well with his debut starters, and there's plenty of speed in the female family to back this one up as well. This coupled stable mate is the 1A Trebbiano by one of those first crop sires you alerted, alluded to. This one by Connect, winner of the grade one cigar mile. What are we to expect from Connect? Because there is some precocity and some fast workouts uh, for Trebbiano. Yeah, Connect is a son of Curlin, so you'd expect him to be better going long, but he scored his biggest win uh, in a grade one race going a mile, so I do expect the Connects to maybe have a little bit more speed than your typical Curlin line horse, and there is, as you mentioned, some speed on the bottom side of the family to back up Trebbiano, who certainly looks like he has some turn of foot. Trainer Paul McEntee doesn't have the highest numbers with first-time starters, but he has sent out some live firsters to hit the board this meet. He's got a coupled entry beginning with the two. Baytown Jakester, who was by an excellent debut stallion. Twirling Candy connects at 20% with his two-year-old first-time starters. And this dam is a full sister to Rockport Harbor, who won the Remsen at two. Yeah, some good two-year-olds in this family. Um, Rockport Harbor, I believe, is out of Regal Miss Copeland, who is a very fast filly. Uh, twirling Candy, they really can do anything. They go short, they go long, they run on multiple surfaces. Uh, this one definitely seems dirt intended with all the dirt in the female family. A couple entry mate, the 2B Baytown Frosty, one of those interesting runners from this barn at the meet, took money, bet down to six to one in the career debut, showed high early speed, had a clear lead at about the 316th pole and just got a little bit tired at the end. This is a son of Frosted, a half to Wilkinson, who is equally good on turf and dirt. Yeah, and you know, the Frosteds have really surprised me uh, a little bit at this meet. He sired a winner on opening day. He had Baytown Frosty go out and run a very good uh, third there. And, you know, the Frosteds from his first crop really seemed to take a little bit of time and distance to develop. So the early success of his second crop of two-year-olds here might be a reflection on the merits he's being bred to. Baytown Frosty already had some four furlong works going into that debut. And he's sure going to move forward, I think, from a fitness standpoint here. Here's a really interesting pedigree. The number three, Tejano Twist, breaking from post position two. This is the first starter by Practical Joke, a multiple grade one stakes winner and a very good two-year-old. Yeah, and Practical Joke is certainly one of the horses that you would expect to be among this year's leading freshman sires. He's, of course, by Into Mischief, who's a leading juvenile sire. Into Mischief's son, Golden Sense, was among the leading freshman sires of his class. Practical Joke, a grade one winning juvenile, a grade one winning sprinter at three. He's an impressive physical. His first two-year-olds have sold very well and performed very well at this season's two-year-old sales so far. He's certainly a stallion to watch with these first runners. 
And a lot of precocity in this female family. The dam has already thrown game day play, a juvenile stakes winning dirt sprinter. The dam herself won her debut. She was grade three placed sprinting on dirt. Trainer Brett Calhoun can get a first time starter ready to fire. So does this guy, Wesley Ward. One of two Wesley Ward train runners is the four Golden Bell. This is a filly by Macho Uno sold for $50,000. She's a half sister to a horse named Doc Boy, who was a good two-year-old, but did most of his damage routing on the turf. And this is a family of turf horses. Perfect Sting is our second dam. Yeah, certainly a lot of turf in the family, but we from a dirt debut win at Keeneland to turf in the future, we've certainly seen that before from Wesley Ward. The dirt is just where the opportunities are with these early two-year-olds, and Golden Bell has a bullet work at Keeneland on the resume. Number five is Teo Mateo, and I like the mixture of stamina over speed in this pedigree. This one is by Carpe Diem, and the Carpe Diem sometimes need a couple of races to find their best footing, but this dam was a stakes-winning sprinter, a family of several good sprinters, and the third dam was a multiple grade one winner on the turf named Tusharman. Yeah, kind of a mixed bag in the female family. You see some sprints on dirt, some routes on turf. As you alluded to, Carpe Diem, even though he was a great one winning two-year-old himself, his have needed a little bit of time to develop. La Flecha is the number six. This is a colt by Summerfront. And I look at this pedigree and I think distance. This is a half brother to Adagun. I think Adagun might have been third in the Belmont Stakes. La Flecha is also a half to Path of David, who is a two year old stakes winner going a round of ground on the turf. A $1,500 yearling. Nice pedigree, but might want more distance. I think so. And perhaps could also thrive on turf. Certainly, uh, summer front uh, being by war front, he was a good turf horse himself. You look at him and you think turf. That said, uh, this family does have two year old ability. The seven is overboard. Wesley Ward, Joel Rosario on an expensive son of Spitestown, sold for $275,000 as a yearling. The dam was a multiple stakes winner on synthetic surfaces. Uh, the family of Franz Valentine, a grade one stakes winner and a very good producer. Yeah, and a very good two-year-old in her own right. I think both of the Wesley Ward horses are well-meant, uh, but I probably prefer Overboard in this spot. Uh, Son of Spites Town, and I like that recent four furlong work for Foundation. The eight is Fleet Kiss. This one is by Breeders' Cup juvenile winner Texas Red, who's gotten off to a good start with his two-year-old first-time starters, four for 17. The dam was just a racehorse. She won seven dirt races in her career, and she's a half-sister to a grade two-placed router. Yeah, and Texas Red uh, has kind of had limited opportunities with his two-year-olds, really doesn't have as many of them out there as some other sires in the commercial marketplace. So 4 for 17 is a very good strike rate for a very good two-year-old who won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. The nine is awfully fast. This is a filly by Will Take Charge, who already has racing experience. She showed a little bit of speed. She raced in the second flight behind a loose pace setter in her career debut, and then she finished up evenly. It was the slower division of two Keeneland baby races on April the 2nd. Yeah, but you know, I do like that winner, Bohemian Frost, a little bit. I like the runner-up from that race, Dreamfly, who got away a bit slowly, but could be a nice filly. Uh, the dam of Awfully Fast, uh, some speed in the family, balances out what I think is a later developing type of sire. And completing the field is the 10 storm sequence. This is a filly, the first starter by grade one winning turf miler, Midnight Storm, who won 10 races and earned a 110 buyer speed figure on the turf. The dam, however, won six dirt sprints. It's a family of precocity and, and uh, juvenile uh, ability. It'll be interesting to see how the Midnight Storms fare going short on the dirt. Yeah, you know, I think he has the potential to surprise some people. 
He's by pioneer of the Nile, who has sired two juvenile champions uh, in classic umpire and, of course, American Pharaoh. And both of them won sprints as well as routes in their two-year-old championship season. I think he's going to be a versatile type of sire who can get them on either turf or dirt. He was a graded performer on both. I think you're going to have to look to the dam a little bit to kind of guess at which each and which. Uh, what each individual by him will want to do. And this female family does have the dirt and two-year-old ability. Top pick time for the kickoff leg of the Sunday pick six at Keeneland. We're both going with Ward. He seems to have found his stride with the Keeneland babies. Overbore has some quick workouts. Yeah, Overbore looks very well meant. And, uh, you know, I, I like the recent four furlong work, as I mentioned, for the Sun and Spikes Town. Behind him, I will look at some of the experienced horses, especially as we get deeper and deeper into the season. Experience is going to count in these races. I agree with you. I think the number two coupled entry of Baytown Frosty with the experience and the interesting first time starter, Baytown Jakester by High Percentage Stallion, Twirling Candy, look interesting. But we'll try to get over Boar home in the Sunday Keeneland Baby Race presented by Spendthrift. <laughs> 